So, let me guess, you're a new returning player that is finally starting to delve into the endgame activities, although your arsenal is severely lacking. Well, you're in luck, because during this video, I'll be able to guide you through where and how to acquire an endgame loadout, saving you from having to tirelessly farm out boring encounters or bust your ass in content that is way too difficult. Before we begin, we gotta talk about endgame weapons. I would classify this as weapons a higher percentage of players use within the harder content of the game, such as raids and monster dungeons. Keep in mind that a lot of weapon usage is decided by the current meta and is subject to change between seasons, although at the time of recording this video, these weapons are currently the best in slot. Just quickly, I would like to thank all of you for 200 subscribers. Just last video, I was thanking you all for 60, so the support on all my videos has been insane. I'm still very new to content creation, so any feedback about my videos would be greatly appreciated. Okay, enough from me. Let's get started. Beginning with the heavy slot, currently rockets are in an amazing spot within the game, being able to clear out large groups of ads as well as putting out some of the highest damage in the game. One such rocket is the hothead, which is easily acquirable with amazing perk combinations. You can get this rocket from Zavala within the tower by legacy focusing two vanguard engrams with the the additional cost of 25 legendary shards and 10,000 glimmer. Looking at the perks here, you're going to want to strive for rolls with impact casing in the magazine slot, auto loading or family planted within the first, or explosive white at Vorpal or clown cartridge within the second. Onto the secondary slot now, honestly this slot can completely be up to preference but submachine guns are in an amazing spot within PvE. The main three to look out for is the Funnel Web, the Callus Mini Tool, and the Eclos SMG, with these perk combinations. However, recently they have been added into the world loot pool, meaning unless Zer, the Gunsmith, or Iron Jesus blesses you with an amazing drop, it is very unlikely that you'll get one soon. If you did play last season, they were focusable and had much higher drop rates, so you may have one tucked away in your vault. If you still don't have any of these three submachine guns, and you don't feel like waiting around checking Banshee or Zer every week, I don't blame you. The next best thing would be the Borrowed Time SMG, SMG. I know this wasn't one of the top three I suggested, but this is by no means a bad subby. As before Callus Mini Tool was prized, this was the best solar subby around, with amazing PvE perk combinations. You can acquire Borrowed Time from the Drifter within the tower, through again focusing, costing you 1 Gamma Engram, 25 Shards, and 5000 Glimmer. The perks you're going to want to look out for is Overflow, Threat Detector, or Feeding Frenzy within the first slot, then Adrenaline Junkie, Surrounded, or Rampage within the second. Keep in mind if you don't get a roll of either weapon with any of these perks I suggested, they are by all means still amazing to use in the time being until you get a better one. Also, if you're looking to farm out either of the playlist engrams, I would highly recommend doing it on a week that is boosted, making your farming a lot quicker. Finally, the primary slot. At the moment, there are three main weapons dominating PvE. The Linear Fusion Rifle, Arbalist, the Stasis Fusion Riptide, and the Exotic Grenade Launcher with the Horde. These three are amazing weapons, and I myself use them nearly every time I log onto Destiny. With Arbalest being great for crit damage and activities with champions, as well as Witherhood and Riptide being amazing for ad clear and putting out surprisingly high damage numbers. Witherhood is probably the hardest weapon to acquire in this video, with it only being available within the Lost Light Monument in the tower. It'll cost you 1 Exotic Cypher, 100,000 Glimmer, 150 Shards, and 1 Golf Ball. Riptide is acquired the same way as Hothead and Borrowed Time. However, this time it will be with the Crucible Vendor Shacks, and it will put you back 1 Crucible Engram, 25 Shards, and 5,000 Glimmer. You're going to want to look out for the perks. Auto Loading, Emily Planted, or Lead from Gold in the first slot, and Chill Clip or Vorpal within the second. Moving on, Arbalist is probably the easiest of the three to acquire, with the quest Another Last City giving it as a reward. This quest is obtainable at Shorehorn on the Cosmodrome. If it's not there, go check out the quest archive in the tower, mine was there. The last part of my video here will just be me walking through the quest. It is seven decently simple steps, so if you feel up to the task and don't need my help, feel free to give it a go. And thank you for watching. If you're still here, let's get going with the quest. Step 1, you need to kill 100 combatants. You can complete this step anywhere if you want, but I personally ran it in the Exodus Garden Lost Sector because that is what would be most accessible to newer players. Step 2 requires you to again defeat combatants, but this time with your super or abilities. I just ran the same Lost Sector an additional 2 times with an Ark Insurmountable Skullfoot Titan. Although, if you don't have that exotic, simply running Ark on a Titan and punching everything works just as well. I'd recommend the same if you're using Hunter, pairing it with Combination Blow and the Gambler's Dodge for a similar effect. As for Warlock, you can't spare melees unlike the previous two, but Arc Souls seem to get the job done, especially if you're pairing it with your other abilities. Next, you have to return to Benchy, where he directs you to Neomuna, requesting you to complete three public events and defeat 100 enemies. Now, this is probably the most difficult part of the quest, because the enemies on Neomuna have a decently high light level, although public events on the planet usually have at least one to two other people helping me when I did them. Meaning, if you need, you can just join the public event and then run around killing some ads. The final step of the quest then requires you get 150 linear kills, stating guardians grant increased progress. Duro checkpoint is how I completed this step. If you are unaware of what this is, it's a raid encounter checkpoint that you can pretty much teleport to, allowing you to farm out the wave of ads with infinite ammo due to the raid banners. If you don't know how to get to the Shuro checkpoint, there will be a video linked in my description to help you get there. Then simply farm out a couple wipes, and Arbalest will be all yours.
Putting the slowdown into use, you'll now be able to effectively clear ads while putting up competitive damage inside any activity. Anyways, that's all from me. Thank you so much for the recent support. It means so much to me. Please feel free to drop any feedback or questions in the comments as I am still trying to improve all my videos. Hope you all have an amazing day. Peace.